Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie and in this video I'm going to teach you introduction and applications of DBMS, data independence or abstraction, and instances and schemas. So let's start with first the definition of a database. A database is a collection of interrelated and persistent data. And here I, I'd like to explain the meaning of the word interrelated. Interrelated means data that is connected with each other. So you'd want data that tells you a story. So you, when you say a database, then all the data inside is connected. And when you look at it, you can get the whole picture of what kind of a database it is. So that is interrelated. Then we have persistent. Persistent uh, means data that does not get destroyed or deleted once it is stored. It has to remain in the system for as long as the person who stored it wants it. Now, what is a database management system? So since the word database is already a part of database management system, it it's pretty much the definition, part of the definition also. A database management system is a collection of interrelated and persistent data and a set of programs to access that data. So when you have a DBMS, it is first of all a database, but it's also a management system. So a management system has all kinds of programs to access and manipulate the data that is stored within the database system. Okay, let's move forward. We are going to see some applications of DBMS and the first of which is the enterprise information. In order to store enterprise information, for example, uh, sales where you want to store how many items were sold and you want to see uh, what kind of stock you require for that we use a database we use a database in accounting to count taxes and make all sorts of calculations we use databases in human resources to store details about employees and their salaries and so on and we use it in manufacturing to store supply chain management related data we use it in online retailers, which we are all quite familiar with uh, when we talk about um, online retailers like Amazon, which, which uses database extensively to store product details and prices and what kind of sales are going on to make recommendation lists for you. Every time you open, you get recommended some products based on your uh, interest. So this type of data is stored within the Amazon database. Next, we have banking and finance. And within banking, database is used to maintain um, account balances in order to know how much withdrawals were made, in order to give you an account statement at the end of the month. They are used in credit card transactions. Again, if you want a statement for your credit card, database comes in handy to know what is the limit of uh, credit card limit of each and every customer. It is used in finance to store information about stocks and bonds and all the rises and falls in the market. Database is also used within universities and in universities it is used to store details about students like their grades and uh, percentile and what kinds of subjects they have studied, what kinds of subjects they're going to study and what exams are going to be taken. So. Practically everything is stored within a database in a university. Then you have airplanes or airlines and within airlines, databases are used for bookings and reservations and finding out which fl flights are available, what is the schedule of each flight and where the flight is going and where it's coming from. And an interesting fact is airlines were the first people to start using a geographically distributed database. Next, it is used in the telecommunication sector. That is all your service providers which provide you with phone calls and internet and so on. So all that data 
of what kinds of phone calls you're making, where you're calling, data about um, what is your limit of internet and how much internet you're using, what you're accessing, how much is left. All these data is stored within a, a database. And this list is not limited here, limited to whatever I'm saying here. There is There are a lot more applications of DBMS and I'm only covering a mere fraction of it. So having established how important a database is, let's now see how it works in internally. So this is a diagram, and this is famously known as the three-level architecture of a database because it has three levels, physical, logical, and view level. And it was uh, given by CJ Date, which is uh, who wrote a reference book on this. Uh, and it's a very good reference book and it, this architecture comes from there and it's a very important architecture in order to understand how databases actually work. So let's start with the bottommost level, the physical level. Now this is the lowest level of abstraction and what abstraction basically means is hiding of data and you might feel that hiding of data is a bad thing. Why would you hide data? And if you wanted to hide, then why have the data at all? So databases are not created to hide data, but they are created to provide abstraction when required. So many times you want to make a database and you don't want everybody to have complete access to it. You want to show some part of the database to somebody and some part of the database to someone else, and which is why you require data hiding. And data hiding or abstraction also provides you independence. Independence uh, to work on a particular level from these three levels without having any knowledge of what's going on below. So we'll, in a while you'll understand it better. So let's get back to physical level. This describes how the data is actually stored so all your data is stored within the secondary memory, which is your hard drive. And this physical level describes how that is stored exactly in the hard drive. And most of us don't need to know that. So it describes, because it describes all these complex level, low level data structures in so much detail, we don't use, usually need to know all these things. So these things can be just, um, ignored by people like you and me who are going to uh, who are just going to design the database and going to use a software so most of the time the softwares take care of this physical level so we don't really need to worry about what happens there now the next level is the logical level and the logical level is the next level of abstraction like i said it is describing the entire database in terms of a small number of relatively simple structures so this also uses some structures, but they are not as complex as those at the physical level. These are structures that we can logically understand if somebody explains it to us or if we read about it somewhere. And also database administrators. Now these are the people who work to create the database and they work at this level, the logical level. And um, in the next video, I'm going to tell you what database, or rather who database administrators are and what they do. So for now, we'll just uh, leave it for the next video. And, but right now you need, just need to know that there are people who work at the logical level and who build the database for you. So that's what the logical level is. And then we have the view level, which is the highest level of abstraction. So the maximum, hiding of data is done at this level. And it describes only part of the entire database, which is why you can see that there is, there are different views created here. You have view one and view two and view n. That is because it contains several parts of the databases, database expressed in different ways so that people get to see different views. And it, uh, exists more mainly to simplify users' interactions with the system. 
system may also provide many views for the same database. So I'll give you a very good example of this. This is when, again, uh, you access as a website like Amazon, you do not know how that database is created, what kinds of products are stored, you know, you don't have uh, the ability to change anything on the, on the website because everything is created in such a way that you only have the ability to view it. So when you are accessing any website like that, then you are using the view level of that website. And then again, if you are accessing from a particular region or particular country, you might see a different view of that uh, database than somebody who is in some other country. And the reason being there are some products available in some countries and some are not. So one view is created, which is just meant for you. And sometimes it is also uh, created for an individual because you are always given a recommendation based on the things that you have viewed in the past and the things that you have bought in the past. So based on that, they know that these are your interests and they provide you with a recommendation list. And this is different for every user. So a view is created based on a user. It could be based on the user's geographical location also. So this helps you to interact with the system in a better way because it understands what you want. It is not simply giving you data items. It is making sure that uh, you are getting what you would be interested in. So that is where abstraction helps. Now, since we have studied what abstraction is, we are going to see now what independence is. Independence is something provided by abstraction. So the first thing is physical data independence. This exists between the physical and the logical level. And what this means is although implementation of the simple structures at the logical level may involve complex physical level structures, the user of the logical level does not need to be aware of this complexity. So that is what physical data independence means. If you are working on the logical level, you do not need to have a knowledge of how the physical level works. And this makes it a lot easier for you to work on the logical level without having any idea what's happening below. So this way, when you create a database, you are only thinking about the logical design and not about how it's going to be physically stored. And same kind of independence is provided for someone working on the view level but it is called logical data independence. So this data independence is independence from the logical level when you're working at the view level. So again, when you access a site like Amazon, you don't need to know what's going on behind the scenes and you don't need to know how the database was created. All you need to do is enter in some search word and fetch products and view them. So this provides you a, a much simpler structure of interacting with the system without having to know the intricacies behind the design of the system. And now we are going to move on to our last two topics and one of them is uh, instances, another one is schemas. What is an instance? An instance is collection of information stored in the database at a particular moment. So whenever database is created, it keeps changing every time. For example, if it's a database of a bank, then it's going to change every time a person makes a transaction. So an instance is the data, it's, it's kind of a picture of a data. So picture captures a still image and a stationary image. So if suppose you were to take a photograph of your database right now, then whatever it captures, whatever information it captures, that is called an instance. And what is schema? Schema is the overall design of the database. And this design is most of the time made by the database uh, system architecture that I said I'll talk about in the next video. So this design is very helpful in creating the database and then being able to use it in a proper manner. Now this design hardly ever changes because you make it in such a way that it, it's going to last and no changes would be required. 
and instance on the other hand keeps changing every time the database changes every time the information stored in the database changes so that's the difference between an in, uh, instance and schema and now we'll do some quick review questions for whatever we saw in this video and i encourage you to just uh, pause the video for a bit after every question and you can try to answer the question on your own and then you can unpause to listen to the answer. So what is a database? A database is a collection of interrelated and persistent data. What is a DBMS? DBMS stands for Database Management Systems and it includes a collection of interrelated and persistent data as well as programs to access that data. What are the applications of DBMS? Applications of DBMS are uh, finance and stock markets and banking, airlines, telecommunications. It's also uh, storing university data. It stores uh, sales data banking data, credit card data. So all these are applications and they are definitely not limited to these, which I have listed. What are the three levels of the database? The physical level, logical level, and the view level, which we saw earlier. What is physical data independence? It is the independence to work on the logical level without having to bother about how the complex level data structures of the physical level work. And logical data independence is independence to work on the view level without having to worry about how the uh, data is working at the logical level and the physical level. What are instances and schemas? Instance is the data stored within the database at a particular moment, so it keeps changing all the time. And schemas schema is the overall design of the database and once it's created it rarely changes so that's it for today's video and i'll see you for the next one thank you for watching